So what is an API gateway? In order to understand an API gateway, it makes sense for us to first chronicle its recent history. And so we can start with the 2000s. In the 2000s, most production services just lived in a single monolith. This meant that the client would hit a single URL, which would route things to this large monolith, our single server, which handled every single feature and talk to the database when needed. It was a dead simple architecture and it was really easy to reason about. But then fast forward to the 2010, 2012 range. These are loose numbers. Growth forced a new trend of the industry where we sliced that monolith into a bunch of different microservices, hence microservice architecture. But now this client has an issue that it ran into. It has to either know the URL of every single one of the microservices and when to call each of them respectively, or alternatively, it would route all of its requests to a single microservice like microservice one, and then microservice one would need to determine when to forward that request on to the other microservices. Either of these approaches was clumsy. Now, the big issue with the second approach was that if we ever wanted to change some simple routing logic, we would need to redeploy an entire microservice. This wasn't ideal. And so fast forwarding then just one year, 2013 to 2014 ish area, this is when we introduced the first generation API gateways by putting a thin layer in front of those microservices. And so now clients could stick to just one endpoint. They only needed to know one endpoint like in the beginning, and it would be the endpoint of the API gateway whose responsibility is to determine which microservice that request should be routed to and then route it to the appropriate microservice. And so at this point now our routing issues are solved, but there was one more problem. And that's that each of these microservices here had all of this repeated boilerplate. They had the same code shared amongst all of them. Things like authentication, rate limiting, logging, all of this was repeated. And so the realization, and this has kind of continued through the mid 2010s all the way until now, was that we can kind of put some of this shared middleware into the API gateway. So all of these repeatable chores could live in this thin layer. And we taught the gateway to do things like terminate TLS, verify auth tokens, throttle abusers, uh, log metrics. It can even cache some common responses that can all happen here along with that routing. And so now every single team just focus on shipping pure business logic and the client only needs a single URL. And we have our gateway in the middle, which is kind of that shared guardrail for our entire platform. And so this is where we ended up. This is where we are today with an API gateway that sits in front of our microservices, where importantly, its main responsibility is still to handle that routing, uh, but it also handles a bunch of standard middleware operations as well. Now we can take a look at what is actually happening inside that API gateway. Let's zoom in just a little bit. And so here is my little nifty drawing of the API gateway. We have all of our clients making requests. Those requests are being forwarded on to each of our services respectively, and then back to the client. And so as you can see within the API gateway, it's responsible for four main things, validating the request, running that middleware, routing to the correct services, and then transforming the response. And so let's quickly go by or go through each of these one by one. And so the first is that request validation. And so this just takes in the incoming requests and it validates it. It makes sure that it has the proper formatting. Does it have the right headers? Does it have the right body if needed? If not, we can immediately reject it. If it does, we move on to step two. Step two is where we run any of that middleware that we talked about. And so oftentimes this involves us actually making a request to an external service. Like maybe if we're uh, handling rate limiting, we have Redis over here and the API gateway makes a request out to Redis. Or in the case of auth, maybe there's an external auth service over here, right? Uh, in either case, we can make as many of those connections as we need to, but be mindful, every single request is doing this. So we want it to be fast. And then we route it to the correct service. So this is, again, that most important bit. So we would look up in a routing map, and let me actually copy one of those in here so you can see it. This would just be a basic config like this, which maps paths from the API route to the location of the services. And so we would look up in this map, say I just got a uh, request for slash messages route that needs to go to the messaging service. See how that works here using this config. And then the messaging service or whichever service is going to do its thing, processing the request as needed, and then returning that response back to the API gateway, at which point the API gateway may need to transform that response. And so for example, if any of these were using a different protocol like RPC, gRPC, something like this, and our clients are using REST, then what would happen is that we would take in that RPC response, 
transform it back into valid JSON in the form of uh, that's expected uh, in the REST response, and then return that REST response back to our clients. Let's take a quick look at some of the most popular API gateways that are used in production systems today. And so you have two classes here. You have the managed API gateways. These are part of your managed cloud solutions like in AWS, Amazon's API gateway. In Azure, Microsoft Azure, you have Azure's API management. I'm sure that Google Cloud has an equivalent too. I actually don't know it off the top of my head. And then you have the op open source alternatives. So things like Kong, Tyke, Express Gateway. These are some of those popular. So if you've ever used any of these technologies, you've already used an API gateway. Um, okay, as we wrap up here, the main thing that I want you to have as a takeaway from this is actually the following. And that's that when you're in a system design interview, put your API gateway down and move on. Don't spend a lot of time on it. The reality is that with a microservice architecture, an API gateway is an expectation. It's largely taken for granted. And so put it there, explain that it handles routing, maybe some middleware, but keep moving. The only mistake you could make is to spend too much time here. It's just not the important part of your design. So it's good to understand, but it shouldn't be the focus. All right, with that, this was short, sweet, to the point. Hopefully you guys found it valuable. Um, good luck with your upcoming interviews and I'll see you again soon.